Hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. I'm working on a new Tunisian lace stitch pattern and I'm thinking I could turn this maybe into a double-ended hook stitch pattern. So you're going to get two in one today. And I am loving this blue color right now. I don't even know what brand it is. It's in my stash and I just, I'm, I'm really living for it. Okay, so I'm going to show you the last thing first or the bind off row first because I want to get my hook off of here so I can show you how to start from the beginning. So all of the return passes for this pattern are their traditional return pass. So I have a, I think it's a J size, maybe even a K size hook and some worsted weight yarn. Yarn over pull through one, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, all the way across. And then I'll have my hook free so that we can start from the beginning and I can show you this. I'm loving this yarn so much that I don't even want to cut it <laughs> right now. I'll start with new colors and I might save this for something else. I haven't decided yet, but this uh, this really sweet blue yarn is, is really speaking to me. Now I am noticing a little bit of a to the to the dominant side lean a little bit here so it may need some blocking at the end but we've got some Tunisian doubles but what I thought was interesting as I was making this is you can clearly see the the horizontal row of the return pass through here and I was thinking what if I could make that in a different color and then I could do and then I was thinking oh well maybe that would be better on a double ended hook so let's let's do that <laughs> let's see what happens friends I will teach you so I'll teach you both but um let's talk about what would happen if I did a Tunisian and then turn it into a double ended hook pattern okay so we're going to do a um we're going to do twos that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and i'm going to add one so 13 is what i've got here and i'm not sure if i as i'm working this out whether this will end up being the pull through row. i think this will end up being the pull through row so we're doing a traditional foundation row which is pulling up a loop in each chain across in the back bar back ridge back bump pulling up a loop and leaving it on the hook there are uh, there is an pretty awesome if I do say so myself extreme beginner Tunisian video on my channel one for right handers and one for left handers so if you're new to Tunisian go have a look at that if you need the the help and then if there are a couple double-ended crochet hook patterns on my channel also if you want those, but let's see what happens today. So I should have 13 on my hook, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. We are right on track. So now, okay, so the pull through is going to be <laughs> the, the second color. So I've got my, my one color here, and let's see if I can make this into a two color double-ended hook so on the oh, why do why do i always start a new gray one i have all of this gray and i think i start a new <laughs> skein of gray every single time maybe i have 30 in my stash and i really ought to just make a whole bunch of gray blankets to get rid of all of it but it is one of my favorite most vertical versatile colors and i pulled out a whole bunch okay so all that big mess there Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the cut end of the yarn, give myself a good five or six inch tail because I like a long tail. I'm going to pull the, hold the new yarn and I'm going to bind off yarn over pull through one, yarn over pull through two, all the way across. So I am binding off with the gray. Now I have to figure out how to dub, make, turn this into a double end. Okay, so let's see what's gonna happen here. So um, I'm going to, for the, for the pattern though, <laughs> are you sticking with me? Okay, so the foundation row is just really boring, plain foundation, no big deal. But I did just pull through with a second color. Whether you're doing solid color Tunisian single-ended hook 
or you're doing double ended hook. We are going to um, chain one at the beginning and that counts as the first stitch. And then for the pattern, we are going to yarn over and we're going to Tunisian double crochet as if to simple stitch. So we're inserting our hook as if to, sim to simple stitch, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through two loops on the hook and leaving it there. And we're going to do that in the same spot through those same two loops. So we're decreasing by two by going under two at the same time but we're placing two there. So we're still in and up, ending up with the same number. So overall, we have not increased nor decreased. So we're decreasing, yarning over, pulling through two at the same time. So we're decreasing, yarning over, pulling through two loops on the hook, but we're increasing again by doing it again in the same spot. So we're decreasing, but then we're increasing. So we end up even, okay? See what I'm saying here? So we're, again, the Tunisian uh, double crochet is yarn over. We are inserting the hook as if to Tunisian simple stitch, going from dominant side to the, uh, to the tension side, yarning over, pulling up a loop through those stitches, yarning over and pulling through two loops on the hook. So we have a double crochet that's just standing there. And we're gonna do the same thing, yarn over, insert in both of those stitches at the same time again, yarn over, pull up a loop through, yarn over, pull through two, okay? And then we'll do the next two. Now we're following rows, there's gonna be two a two row repeat, so we're gonna offset these little double crochets by one stitch so that they are offset like bricks. So here we have it like here and then here and then, let's see, here and then here and then here and then here. So we're going, we're jogging um, up steps with this stitch pattern. Okay, so don't forget where you're going, Ellen. Okay, I do wanna try to see what happens though if I do a double-ended. So don't forget on the, on the last two Tunisian simples here, we need to just do a solo Tunisian double on this first row. So it's the first row of pattern. We had a foundation row, now we have a first row of pattern. And then we'll do a Tunisian double in the last stitch as if um, to Tunisian double, okay? Okay, so there's a single one here and a single one here and then the pattern all the way across. And then you can imagine next time on the next row, we are going to um, do a single one here, a single one here, and then we're gonna go through these two together, these two together, and then you can see these two together and then these two together so that we're jogging the little groupings, okay? All right, so what happens if I, oh, you know what? Double-ended though, turns. And Tunisian doesn't. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just give it a try. So I'm gonna slide my hook down to the other side and turn. <laughs> and then we're gonna pull up the pink and I'm, I'll make a really long tail here so that I can cut if necessary. Now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through one. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing, Ellen? This makes no sense. Does it make sense? I'm trying to teach you two things at the same time. So I showed you the first row, I sort of predicted for you or laid out for you how the second row would go, but then my curiosity got the best of me and I thought, oh, what happens if I do a double-ended here? So if I do a double-ended here, now I need to load up my loops again. So this pattern calls for a chain one at the beginning of every row. And then I need to, let's see, grab probably these two at the same time because I turned and then do it again. So if this video actually goes up, it's while I'm on vacation. So you can be like, oh my goodness, Ellen, where was your brain? Because 
Um, I hope this makes sense for you and you can at least have some fun with it. So yarn over, insert the two at the same time with a Tunisian double crochet as if to simple stitch. And when I say as if to simple stitch, I'm talking about the hook placement in the next stitches. So if, if it were to as of purl, then it, that would be different with the yarn over. If it was to as of knit wise, it would be um, different, but as to simple stitch means you just stay kind of on the surface and go under those loops from your dominant hand across toward your tension hand. Okay, and then we have a single one, and then we have a single one here because we turned. Now with double ended crochet, what happens is every time the hook is loaded up with stitches is when we turn. So when, when we're loaded up with stitches, we slide the hook and then turn like a page, turning the page of a book. It doesn't really matter which way. And, and then our stitches are ready to pick up the other yarn, whether it be the same color or a different color. In this case, we're doing two colors. Let's make sure we still have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. We do, we still have 13 loops on the hook. So now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through and the uh, gray will be the yarn over pull through color. So totally radically different um, view of this. So if, I stayed only turning on the right side. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. So in that wild, so very different, very, very different with a double edged hook or a double hook, double ended hook compared to the single. So we're turning with the double ended hook. We're not turning with the Tunisian. So let's just do another row of this and then I can go back to the other one so we can play around with that a little bit. But you can see that this gives us a lot of fun. Always chain one at the beginning of this particular pattern. And we will go ahead and um, do the same thing. I am looking at the offset like bricks pattern, but because we're turning, that's why we're really not alternating rows on this one. So I'm just eyeballing it. So let's just do one more row of this one, and then we'll go back to the blue and see what happens if we alternate. I think maybe what I was thinking is we would, I forgot about the turning part of the double ended hook. So if we want to do two colors in the Tunisian, just one single ended hook, and we wanted the um, pull through color to always be the same, I think it's going to be sort of like in Tarja where you have to have two balls of each color and they would be dangling off the side. Okay, so then our hook is loaded up, so we will slide the hook down and turn. And then we'll pick up the other color that is dangling here, that's just dangling off the side from the previous row, and we will yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, all the way across. Okay, so that gives you a quick and dirty tutorial of this um, offset, I don't even know what to call it. Everything looks like chicken feet to me. <laughs> um, the, the arrows pointing upward. So if we have, so these are essentially the same pattern. This one is Tunisian in the blue. This one on the right with the fuchsia and gray is um, double-ended hook. So this is the wrong side of the double-ended hook. And here's the right size side of the double ended hook. So they look similar, but very different, both very fun, both equally valuable. You'll have a great time with this one. I hope you have enough instruction to know what to do. And then you will just continue that in pattern. And then going back to this Tunisian one, I am going to cut the gray because I'm, I think I'm going to use the gray here and the other one. Okay, so if I were to find a way to only do, so now we're talking only with a single ended hook, even though I'm using a double, it's just, I'm just gonna use it as a, as a Tunisian um, hook. So chain one, because we're gonna chain one at the beginning of every row for this one. And if we're offsetting, can you see that between my thumbs right there are two Tunisian double crochets? So if I'm gonna offset, then I need to pick pick the last stitch of the double 
and the, the one before it. So I'm going to yarn over Tunisian double crochet through two loops at the same time, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, but I'm doing it twice in the same set of stitches. So let's see what happens here. I need to give myself some more yarn. Let's see what happens, friends. Are you on a yarn adventure with me today? So we're doing this all the way across, just like I showed you in the beginning. When I split the yarn, so I'd like to go back, please. Yes. Okay, so I'm offsetting these a little bit and I want to yarn over and pull through with a different color and see what happens. I will not be turning at all. I'm going to use just a single-ended uh, hook technique. This is a Tunisian technique rather than a double-ended hook technique. So you're sort of getting two patterns in one today. Actually, probably three. <laughs> so one you could do solid, um, and then two you could do the double-ended, and then also you could do... Um, <laughs> I'm not even listening to myself. You could use the double-ended or you could just do the Tunisian um, with two rows. Okay, so as we get to the end here, there's only two loops left. So I'm going to Tunisian double and then Tunisian double in, in the manner of solo one stitch at a time to get to the end because that's the way it goes. When you offset, sometimes you have some extra. Every other row, you have some extra. You can see the general like diagonal... Uh, visual property going on there and that's I'm sure why it's leaning a little bit okay so my theory is if I were to have two balls of blue one on each side and two balls of another color one on each side I'm going to do lavender um, then I think this would work <laughs> where you would pull through with one and then you would stitch with one and then you'd pull through with the other and you would just pull up the sides. And again, I pulled out way too much yarn here. Um, the, so much yarn came out of the middle of this skein. So now I got to try to find the middle. Literally like half of the yarn came out in the yarn, uh, <laughs> the yarn ball. So I'm get, trying to find the end of it. Theo is watching with great amusement and interest as I wind all of this yarn. He is up on his perch from above in his cat tree watching me wind this yarn. He's got great interest in yarn. Okay, so if I have this lavender and I made a big old knot in it, so I'm just going to cut the knot off. Okay, so what would happen then is I'm going to start the new yarn over here the way I did before with a good five or six inches of tail because I like a long tail so that it, I can weave it in later. Yarn over with that hook, that yarn that you're holding. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Hold it tight for at least the first couple until you get it hooked in there, literally. Ha <laughs> ha. And then continue to yarn over and pull through two all the way across. Now we're not going to slide the hook at all on this one. We're just using it as a Tunisian hook. And what would happen is on this last pull through, I would grab a second ball of blue. So pretend I have a, another brand, another ball. Even if you took one ball and before you began work, you uh, rolled it or um, separated it in, into two balls or bobbins. Imagine I have a second ball of blue over here. And I would, on this last yarn over and pull through, I would pull through on the second ball of blue and pull through with the new ball of blue, okay? Then I am going to keep in pattern. So if I am going to uh, do the offset, it would be this one and this one. I'm gonna grab two at the same time. So chain one for the pattern. Then I'm gonna do a single Tunisian double crochet in the first one as if to simple stitch. And then I will do two at a time as if to Tunisian simple stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that I have two Tunisian double crochets through the next two stitches. And I'm going to do this all the way across. 
okay, and I need to, I'm making myself a big old mess here, but that's okay. Do you know what I'm saying by pretending or, you know, having uh, two balls on, you know, one of each color on each, uh, the right and the left, so that you can continually pick up the previous one and work with it and then drop it at the end of the row and then pick it up the next time. But what I'm thinking is like, how can I make the yarn over? And this theoretically would work with all Tunisian patterns, friends, by having two balls on each end of the work, the right side of the work and the left side of the work, one of each color. So the colors are separated. I'd have one blue on the right, one blue on the left, one purple on the right, one purple on the left of balls, even if you just took one ball and separated it into two bobbins. So kind of, okay, so then I'm getting all the way across here. And then as I work through this last stitch, I am Tunisian double crocheting. It's a little hard to figure out where to put that, but we're gonna put it in here where we can get, technically it's supposed to be one blue and one purple loop here that you go in to Tunisian double, okay? So we've got our working stitches here, give you a close up. And then I would drop the blue and I would pick up my second ball of purple and hold the second ball of purple and yarn over with the purple and do the bind off again. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So the biggest problem with this particular pattern is that it's a little bit harder to find the edge, the um, tension side edge, because it's not just a beautiful one loop, one loop, one loop up the side the way many Tunisian patterns are. And so you'll have a little bit of trouble um, maybe making sure your right edges and your left edges are correct, but it's worth it because the pattern is cute. And then, okay, so then when you get over here, again, instead of yarning over and pulling through with the purple twice, I'm gonna drop the purple now, pick up the blue that is handy, the blue that is coming from that same side, from the one ball on the hook side, yarn over and pull through to finish. And then we will go ahead and chain one because the pattern needs it. And then we'll go ahead and continue our pattern with the uh, Tunisian double crochet under two loops at the same time, doing that twice. So we decreased and then we increased, decrease over the next two, and then we increase by putting another one in the same exact spot. And my yarn is getting taut, so I need to grab some more yarn. But it's, it is actually working now, see? So I can see that the, the um, pull-through color is different than the stitch color. So the, return, the forward pass is in blue and the return pass is in lavender. So technically you could do this for any Tunisian pattern. You would just need the yarn separated so that you had um, yarn on either end. Now what I'm doing now, since I don't have yarn on either end, is I'm just leaving a big old like loop on the back and then I could cut it and weave in the ends, but then I'd have to weave it in for every row. And I don't really wanna do that. I'd rather have two balls and, and just weave in one end for each side than to cut the yarn continually. Okay, so when you get all the way to the end, you finish with um, a Tunisian double, in one stitch, Tunisian double in the next stitch till we make sure that we have 13 loops on the hook. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh oh, 14, 15, what? Okay, I increased somewhere. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. I did, I increased somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully you're getting the hint though that at this point we would yarn over and pull through the purple and um, and then that would be our return pass in the alternate color. All right, so if you can see what I did wrong, let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just designing on the fly here. So 
um, this would be clearly a first draft instead of a final draft because I somewhere increased by too many stitches. Let's take a look at it and see if I can figure out where I did that. So still a very valuable and relaxing use of my time as I learned something, but look at the look at the um the tilt on it now. But of course I've also increased two stitches somewhere. So you know, yeah, one, two, one. I'm not sure where I increased. Oh well, I can keep playing with it. And if you can figure it out, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just seeing, I probably put it either on the front end of the row or the sec or the end, either the front end of the row or the back end of the row is usually where mistakes happen in terms of increasing. So I'm not seeing it jump out at me, but that doesn't mean, oh, you know what? I wonder if I was supposed to, No, it looks like this row down here. Oh, well, I hope that you found this valuable, even though somewhere along the line I messed up. <laughs> but thanks for hanging with me, and I will see you um, on the next video. Take care. Bye.